Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to your 8th Git and GitHub tutorial and in this video we're going to start creating branches. Okay then, so branches are a massive part of Git and probably one of the better features of Git as well. Now, so far we've only been working on one branch and that is the master branch right here. And remember, when we create a new repository, what we're doing is we're creating this master branch as well. And when we've been making commits, we've been committing only to this master branch right here, like that. Okay. Now, generally speaking, this master branch is going to represent the stable version of your code. And normally, it's going to be the code which is released or published. Now, for that reason, we don't really want to try out new features or new code on this master branch, just in case it messes the code up. What we really want to do if we want to add a new feature to our application is create some kind of isolated environment right to try out this new feature and if we like it we can merge this new feature into the master branch and that is what branching is all about so say we have some kind of a new feature that we want to test out instead of adding more commits onto this master branch to test it out what we do is we make a new branch which is an isolated environment to test this code out so what we're doing here when we make this branch is we're kind of copying the state of the code that it's in right here, this stable version, and we're copying it kind of down here onto this branch to begin with. Then we can work in this code in this branch, make commits, test things out, okay? Then if we're happy with this new feature, if it's all stable, we can merge it back into the master branch, and that's called a merge commit. So now this master branch is updated with that new feature. But if everything goes wrong in this branch, you've tested things out and it messes the code up or doesn't work, what we can do is just delete that branch and it's not going to affect this master branch. This is still stable. It's not been touched at all. So that's why we use branches. And one of the cool thing about branches is if we have two developers working on the same project at the same time, doing two different new features, what we could do is one of us make a branch to work on one feature one of them make a branch to work on the other feature. We can both work on these features in their own branches at the same time. Then when each one of them is happy, they can merge back into the master branch. So it allows us to work on different features at the same time, which is really cool. Okay then, so I'm back in the Git one repository and we're just at the very start of this repository as it was when we first started. So there's just one commit so far. And I can see that if I type git log hyphen one line, we can see just this one commit, which is the added index and styles files. So the index file and the styles file. And you can see that we're on the master branch right here. This is one cool thing about Commander over here is that it says what branch you're on. And the fact that it's white here means that we've not got any changes that are not committed. But if I make a change over here and save it, then if I just say, I don't know, git status, just to update this thing over here, what you're gonna see is this master over here is now red. And that tells me that I've got changes over here that are not committed. So let's just change this to something, I don't know, different, a word at least. Woo! Save it. And what I'm going to do is just commit this. So I'll say git add, then git commit m, and I'll just put added index title. Okay, so now we've got two commits, right? We've got the first one and this one. So I'll say git log one line, just to see those. Okay, two commits. Now, say I want to work on some kind of new feature. I'm not going to start working on this master branch just in case it messes up the code, right? So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new branch. So how do we do that? Well, all we do is we say git branch and then the name of the branch. So I'm just going to call this feature hyphen one. OK, and now it's created this new branch. And if I want to see this branch, I can say git branch and then hyphen A, that's going to show me all the branches. Now you can see this branch right here, feature one, and also master. Now master is green, it's got this asterisk next, uh, asterisk next to it. This means I'm on this branch, this asterisk, right? So if I want to be on this branch, because I want to work on this new feature, I need to check out that branch. Much like we checked out a commit, we can check out a branch to kind of be on it, okay? The way we do that is by saying git checkout, and then the branch name, which is feature hyphen one. So it says now switched to branch feature one. And if I do git branch hyphen A again, then we're going to see that we're now on feature one. Cool. So now we can start working on this new feature. So say, for example, I just want to add in a JavaScript file, which is called feature hyphen one.js. And inside here, I'm just going to do a console.log 
and it's going to say, I don't know, feature one. Doesn't really matter. Could be anything this. It's just a JavaScript feature, right? So then, now, if I do git status, we're going to see that we've changed this file, we've added it, and what I want to do is commit to this file now. I want to commit to, sorry, I want to commit to this branch now. I want to commit this file to the branch. So, I'm going to add it, first of all, to the staging area. Git add, and then that's going to add it. We can see that doing git status. So now it's green, okay. Now we want to commit it, and we want to say git commit m, and added new feature file, right? So now what we're doing is we're working on this new branch, we're creating this new feature, right? But it's isolated, it's away from the master branch, and we've not changed that at all. And I can demonstrate that. I can check out the master branch again, I can switch back to it. And to do that, we just say git checkout master, right? And that's switching back to the master branch now, and you'll notice that that JavaScript file is gone. So while I'm on this master branch, I'm not actually editing anything, right? This is remaining stable. It's only when we're on the feature one branch that we can see all of the code that we're creating and testing out. So let us go back to it, git checkout feature one, and you'll see it reappear on the left. You can see it reappear now, yeah? Over here, cool. So there we go, we've created a branch and we've started work on it. Now, what if things go wrong and we just want to delete that branch? Well, we can delete it. First of all, I'm going to go back to master, git checkout master. So we're no longer on this feature branch. Then we're going to delete this feature branch. And the way we do that is by saying git and then branch, then hyphen D for delete and then the branch name, which is feature hyphen one. Okay, oops, I've spelled branch wrong. Let's just correct that. And it says here we've got an error and it says, the branch feature one is not fully merged. If you're sure you want to delete it, run git branch capital D then feature one. So basically lowercase d is only ever going to work once we've merged the branch. And I'm going to show you how we merge branches later. But for now, let's just use capital D. So we'll say git branch capital D and then the name of the branch, which is feature hyphen one. Now that is going to delete it. Deleted branch feature one. And if I type in now git branch hyphen a, it's only going to show as the master. Okay, so we've created a branch and we've deleted it. And now I want to show you working on two branches at the same time. So remember to create a branch, we can say git branch and then the branch name, but then we have to check out the branch. I want to show you a quick way to do this. Instead, what you can do is you can say git checkout and then hyphen B to say we're making a new branch and the branch name. So I'm going to call this feature A, right? So what that does is it creates the branch and it checks it out as well. So we don't have to perform those two steps, uh, steps separately. Cool. So we're on this new branch now. Let me just get rid of this JavaScript file. We're going to create a new one. And that is going to be called feature-a.js. And let's just say console.log feature a. Save it. Okay. So now we want to commit this or so we'll say git add then git commit m and we'll say added feature a file. Okay, so now we're working on this branch doing feature a. Let's just now imagine we're person B somewhere working on feature B. So we'll say git checkout master and we don't see their code, right? We don't see the feature they're working on. And what we wanna do is actually work on our own feature. And we can do that, we can say git checkout hyphen B for new branch then the branch name feature hyphen B and I could create a file over here in file and we'll call this feature hyphen B dot JS and uh, inside here we'll say console dot log and it's going to be feature if we can spell correctly feature B save that now I want to commit it onto this branch so I'll say git add to add it to the staging then git commit um, and the message which is added feature B file. Okay, so now we've got these two branches going on at the same time, person one working on feature A, person two working on feature B, and neither one of them is affecting the master branch. And we can see that by saying git checkout master. Okay, so now we no longer see that file over here of either of the features because the master is remaining untouched. We've got two separate branches going off from the master working on their own kind of features and only when they're happy are we going to merge them back into the master. And if we say git 
branch hyphen a we're going to see all of these different branches we can see what on the master but currently we've got these two branches feature a and feature b going okay so when they're finished they can merge them back into the master branch and that's what i'm going to show you how to do in the very next tutorial